Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you again to Kingdom Life Ministries International Program. Dr. T.S. Mliwe here. I'm saying welcome. God bless you. Let's study together what the Lord is saying today to us. As we study the word, it helps us in this life and prepare us for the life to come. Because as Christians, we believe life doesn't end here. Life doesn't end like this. There's a greater life, greater joy, greater eternity, which we're heading to. I've been talking about the last few Sundays that we're in the new year, and God wants to do new things for us, but as much as possible, we must also get into new life. We must also live this new life. I want to talk today to you, all the, 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 the audience, the watch, those who are watching our program, and the title of my message is, The Old Way Must Go. The Old Lifestyle Must Go. The Old Lifestyle Must Go. And I'm reading from the message. Today I'm preaching from the message because as I studied, I found that it, it, it explains things much more uh, better and much more clearer, I suppose. From the message, from verse 17 uh, way down to verse 24. All right. The Bible says, and so, this is Paul talking to the church of Ephesus, and so I insist, and God backs me up on this, that there be no going along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd, they have refused so long to deal with God that they have lost touch, not only with God, but with reality itself. They can't think straight anymore, feeling no pain. They let themselves go in sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of perversion. But that's, not, that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him. Being well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten. Through and through, get rid of it, man. And then take on an entirely new way of life. What is the new way of life? A God-fashioned life. A life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. Did you get that? Now that is the message. Let me read to you from the New Living Translation, the same scripture. Because there is something I want here. The Bible says, with the Lord's authority I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, man, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul was talking to the church about these issues, which I know in most of our churches today, you don't hear messages like that. And Paul is preaching in the new dispensation of grace. But listen to his, 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 his message. He's not only talking about motivational. He's not only talking about telling people you know, that they mustn't feel guilty and all that. He's telling them that the old lifestyle we lived in the world must go. And many people don't want to hear that anymore. And of course the Bible said in the last days people won't like the truth. The Bible said they will, they will have itching ears. They want to hear sweet things, good things, only motivational things, as if life ends in motivation. Ladies and gentlemen, 
if the efficient church members were not doing stuff like this, he wouldn't teach them not to do. He wouldn't tell them not to do. In other words, it means you can receive Jesus and be born again. And be declared you are a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, new th all things have become new. But you see, the problem is you are a free moral agent. You live a life of choice. And when you choose whatever you choose, even if it's wrong, God doesn't strike you with lightning. He doesn't hit you with a piece, with a rod of iron. He allows you to live your life the way you choose. But he knows he will get you. Now watch this. Paul says, man, ladies and gentlemen, let's not live like the Gentiles. You see, if they were not living like the Gentiles, he wouldn't say, let's not live like the Gentiles. It means the church, some church members were living like Gentiles. Gentiles here simply means people who are not Christians. Now watch this. How do they live? The Bible says they are hopelessly confused. They are hopelessly confused. How do we, how do we, how do we clarify that? What, what, what shows that they are confused? The Bible says their minds are full of darkness. Their minds are full of darkness. Now imagine with a dark mind. How do you, how do you think positive, beautiful, good things with a dark mind? The Bible says the people of the world, their minds are darkened. But then, there are some people in the church whose minds are darkened. How do we know they are darkened? The Bible says they wander far from the life that God gives. Hello? The scripture is saying you, you live according to your thoughts. The Bible says as, you think, as a man thinketh, so is he. So you see, when your mind is darkened, it affects your heart. When your heart is influenced by your dark mind, you will live a dark life. You will live a dark life with your church membership. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible showed that the people of the world and some Christians in our churches, they are, their minds are full of darkness. And what happens? They wonder. They move away from God. They move away from God, meaning... They live life that is against God's word. To move away from God simply means they live life that's against the word of God. God wants us to live a holy life. He wants us to live a life that, that reflects him. But you see, with a dark mind and a heart that is influenced by the dark mind, we can never think straight. We can never live right. We can never act right. We can never behave right. We can never, you know, think and react right. Because it all depends on the type of the mind and the heart that we have. The Bible says, they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts. Goodness me. Oh my God. The Bible says, the people of the world, they, are, they harden their heart. You know, look, the Bible doesn't say the devil hardened their hearts. It says people by their own choice, they harden their hearts. Not only that, the Bible says they harden. I mean, they close their minds. In other words, when, when a Christian, a child of God, so to say, a church member, so to say, when you hear the word, ladies and gentlemen, and you refuse to do what the word says. And you do this again and again. Your mind, your mind means, it means it closed. Now, if it is closed, it means the word of God cannot come in. And it is the word of God that can change us. Jesus says in John chapter 15, he says, we, uh, he was talking to Peter and others, he said, you have been purged by the word that I preached. So the word of God is able to cleanse us. The word of God is able to, to make us right. So with my mind closed and my heart hardened against God, how can I be a real Christian? Except to be just a church member. How can I be a genuine, born-again Christian? With a closed mind. In other words, I refuse to do whatever God tells me to do. With a hardened mind, hardened heart, it means the word of God doesn't come in into my heart. 
And if the word doesn't come into my heart, how then do I live right? Because before I meet Jesus, my heart is full of the world. It's full of the thoughts of the world and the lifestyle of the world, the behavior of the world, and I like it. But when I come to Jesus, God said, no, 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 no. You don't do that here. Here in the kingdom, you don't do that. But then we got millions of people around the world who live exactly like the world. And they don't care. And they're not even ashamed. Christians I'm talking about. And even now in the new year, you find that they are continuing with the old lifestyle that God had grace for us in 2022 going back. He had grace upon us that we didn't die in that situation. But now he says, hey, we are in the new year 2023. Change your lifestyle. He says, change your lifestyle. The Bible says in verse 19, he says, people who live like the world have no sense of shame. People who live like the world... They have no sense of shame, even if they are Christians, even if they are pastors, even if they are bishops, even if they are apostles or whatever they, the label may be. The, the Bible said, watch them. When they sin, they are not even ashamed. They don't even care. They're not even ashamed. Isn't that pathetic? Isn't that terrible? That I'm a Christian, a pastor, and I'm not ashamed to sin. Why? Their heart is hardened the mind is closed the bible says they live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity the message says we read it it says when your mind is closed against the word of god and your heart your heart is hardened the bible says then you get into all kinds of sexual perversions you get into all kinds of things wrong things which you know they are wrong but you still do them why you have no power you have no ability of resistance why because only the word of god can enable us only the word of god can enable us to live right how, how does that happen pastor when the word of god says i i must do something when i do it when i do it then the the opposite which is sinful I will not do it because I'm busy doing the right thing. Friends, it is the word of God that you need. Not only just to read it, but believe it, man. You just live the word of God. Oh, pastor, but it's difficult. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. It is because you and I don't want. We don't want to live for God. Because the, to live for God is a spiritual matter. We want the physical, the fleshy matters. But the word of God and the lifestyle in the kingdom of God is spiritual. Come on now, think about it. It's spiritual. So the, Jesus said the word of God is spirit. Which means now, if I take the word of God and I hear God saying, don't do that, and I stop. And he says, do this, and I start. I'm living by the word. And if I develop that tendency of living by the word, I will not live like the world. I will not live like the world. Because the world is driven by the thoughts and the ideas of the world. So I'm driven by the thoughts and the word of God. Watch this. Paul says in verse 20, he said, but that isn't, this isn't what you learned about Christ. That's not how we were taught that we can live like that in Christ. Since you have, we have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. So, in Jesus, we are taught a new lifestyle. We are, we are taught a new lifestyle, which is different from that of the world. And the Bible says, this truth comes from him, Jesus. Remember, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So, when I live the word of God, I'm actually living the, the life of Christ. Listen to this. The Bible says, Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature. Ephesian church, I, Paul, your father in the Lord, I am saying throw off your old sinful life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it means now in the church of Ephesus, there were Christians who were living that old life 
that they lived before they came to Jesus. It means there are people, there were people in the church there who were living the old lifestyle of the world. But then the Bible says, throw off yourself. Take, stop it. Throw off means stop it. Stop living like the world. You're a child of God. Stop it. Oh, pastor, but I can do Yes, of course you can. Of course you can. It's only that maybe you don't want. It's only because you don't want. Let me give you an example. If I, I, I used to be a drunkard, I used to drink and, you know, drink myself to, to, to a stupor and, uh, and I'm drunk. I don't even know where home is. I don't even know where I am. I, I don't even know what I'm doing and all that. And I hear about Jesus, that there's a new life of being a teetotaler, a person who doesn't drink. And I hear about that. And I, I accept Jesus. I say, Lord, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. I said, Lord, I've acce I accept you in my heart. Come into my heart. Come and help me. This Jesus can help you stop drinking. He can help you stop smoking. He can help you stop all this life of the world. Yes, he can. That's why he said, without me, you can do nothing. And Paul says, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. So it means it, when, when Christ is in your heart and you live by his word, you can live a holy life. You can live a clean life. You can live a wonderful godly life. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And Paul says, throw off. In other words, you stop it. Stop living that old life. Now, if I was a drunkard, watch this. And I, I, I don't go to a drinking place anymore. And in my house, there's no beer anymore. How would I drink? How would I do it? I don't go to a drinking place. I don't go to the bottle store anymore. I, I, there's no beer in my house. How will I drink it? And besides, if I don't open the bottle myself and pour the stuff into a glass myself or use the bottle itself and put it in my mouth myself, that beer cannot come out of the bottle and come to my mouth, flowing in the air and looking for my mouth. There is nothing like that. Which means, whatever I, 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 I am doing, it is me doing it. There is no beer that leaves a, a bottle and comes into somebody's mouth. And say, well, what could I do? Beer just came, opened my mouth, and flow into my mouth, down my throat, into my stomach. There's nothing like that. So you and I can live a holy life. We can. Yes, we can. So that's why Paul said, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. Throw it away. Stop it. The Bible says, why? Because it is corrupt. It's rotten. It's full of deception. You are being deceived that it's okay that Jesus died for us. It's okay to live a sinful life. Sin has been forgiven. Hey, 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 hey. You show me a scripture that says that. I've been reading the Bible. I've never seen a scripture like that. I see, I hear people, you know, turning scripture to that idea. But I don't read it in the Bible. The Bible says, throw off your own sinful life which is your former way of life, which is corrupt and, and it is deceptive. Verse 23. Instead, let the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, renew your thoughts. Remember? The Bible said the thoughts, our thoughts before we make a decision to live right, our thoughts are closed. Hmm? Our hearts are darkened. You know that? And the Bible says now, it says in verse 23, instead let the Holy Ghost renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Verse 24, and then put, your, put on your new nature. Put on your new nature. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this new nature? It is, it is life created to be like God. The message said it is a God-fashioned life. A God-fashioned life. Created to be like God. Truly righteous. Truly holy. Oh glory. Truly righteous and truly holy. 
Friends, let's not be deceived by the devil. And people who are not serious with the things of God, who say there's nobody holy, there's nobody's righteous, the Bible doesn't say so. It says you can put on this new nature. Remember, he said throw off your old lifestyle and put on the new nature, now, which means a new life which you live according to the word of God. The new life which the Paul says put it on, he was saying live this life which is directed and controlled by the word of God. How? Simply. When God says do something, you do it. When he says stop it, you stop it. When he says believe it, you believe it. When he says live it, you live it. When he says give, you give. When he says forgive, you forgive. That's a new life. Paul says put it on. Now, if he said put it on, it means it is possible to put it on. Yes, it is possible. Oh, pastor, but I've been struggling for years. You know, I don't know how to stop. Yes, of course, you know. I'm telling you today that you can stop. Stop going to the bottle store if you don't want to drink. Stop walking and traveling and, and befriending people who are drunkards. Because you will be influenced and you will start to drink again. Part ways with them. Part ways with them. If they are in their homes or in their place where they are doing that and you are not there, how would you do it? How will you do it? So to put on the new nature, it simply means change and live the life which the word of God says we should live it. Live the life that God says we should live. And he tells us exactly how to live. How to live with yourself, how to live with your family, how to live with the community, community members, how to live with church members, how to live with your government, how to live, you know, and all that and all that. The, the word of God talks about everything. So you and I have got, have got no excuse. How about pastor, you know, you're telling the truth, the man, I, I, I want to do that. Of course you can start now. Yeah, but I, on the 1st of January, I told myself that I will never do X, Y, Z. But I've, I've already found myself doing X and, X and Y, and I'm about to do Z. Don't be discouraged. Take the word we're sharing with you today. Put off your old lifestyle. Live it. Stop it. And adopt this new life. Which the word of God tells us to live. And God wouldn't say, let's do it if it was impossible. God bless you as you meditate on this. Can I pray for you? Let's pray. Daddy, thank you for your word. You want us to live this life, the Bible says, which you create within us by your word. As it tells us what to do and what not to do, what to believe and what not to believe, where to go and where not to go, etc. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He came and showed us that the world may be there, but he was never part of the world. He was never involved with things, the ugly, sinful things of the world. So which means it is possible. I pray for that mom. I pray for that daddy. pray for that young person, that daddy. If they are born again, and, but they found themselves living like the world, I pray that the Holy Ghost will encourage them not to give up. That they will not give up. They will not get angry with God and say, I can't live this holy love. Yes, of course we can. I pray that, God, you will convince and convict us and help us believe that we can. And, of course, as we believe, so we shall be. I pray for all this, Daddy, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. And thank you very much. I bless your name, Dad. Thank you so much for being our God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are watching this program and you are not born again, you are not saved, your sins are not forgiven, and you want to be saved and you want to, be, to have your sins forgiven. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. I've opened my heart. I receive you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Change my life by the power of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, what's left with you now is to get a good church where you are taught the word of God as it is, not diluted like most of the preachings of the last days in which we are.
Get to a church where they will love you, look after you, encourage you, teach you this word. The word. Not some philosophy or some story of some pastor or somebody, but the word. And you will make it to heaven. God bless you. Lord willing, I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.